I'm Ken Crow, and this is Plunkin' Cog's Toy Shop. I'd like to show you how the different things work. Over here is a marionette that I built, made out of wood and computer-rendered parts. This is the roller vader. It has cogs and steel ball bearings and gears. This is Holy Cow. This is a zoetrope and a praxinoscope. This is examples of how things were built in rough prototypes. This is as fancy as I ever got with my drawings. They're on napkins. This is Hornsby Hoodwinker. He's a marionette, and his mouth works when you pull his mouth string. He was generated partially with a computer, head, hands, feet, and hat. The rest was made out of wood and cloth. He's 11 inches tall. This is Waldo Wingdinger. He's an 11 inch marionette. His head turns, his wings will flap, and his legs will kick. Waldo is made out of wood, computer rendered parts, felt, wood, and metal. This is Ruskin Tinker Tapper. He's a marionette, 24 inches tall. Computer generated head, hands, and feet. Body made out of foam and wood. He has expressions. He can blink his eyes. He can move his eyebrows. And he can turn his eyes. His mouth works. This is Scrooge. He has uh, expressions on his face. His eyelids go up and down. His eyebrows move up and down. And he talks. He moves his hands. He can walk. He's a complete marionette. This is Argus, Argus Scuttle Buttons. He has the very same movements. He has computer generated parts, foam, metal buckles. Over here is Otis J. Snozzleblast's one-man band, made out of wood, computer-rendered parts, cloth, and metal. The gears were cut with a laser, and he plays music when you make him work. This is 
cranky McClinking Cog's kaleidoscope. The bottom turns with mirrors, and this kaleidoscope has images through the barrel. It has woodworking, metalworking, computer generated parts, and sewn pieces. This is Major Sweats and Pops. When you crank it, his legs move, the propellers turn, his head bobbles, and you can see the gears turning down below. He's made out of computer generated parts, woodworking, and metal. Everything in this display was designed on a computer. And this is Vincent Chatswell. He can talk, he can move his hands. He has woodworking, computer generated parts. And this is Chester Bumpkins. Like the other 24 inch marionettes, his eyebrows, eyelids blink and eyebrows move, and his mouth will open and close and talk, and he has different expressions, and he moves. And all of his legs work as a marionette. He's half man, half goat. Hi, I'm Ken Crow, and welcome to McClinkin Cog's Toy Shop. Hey, Mike and wife, Mike wife? Vicky. 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 <laughs> hey, here I'd like to give you a tour of uh, what I got to work on. This is uh, a marionette body that I designed on a computer and uh, computer generated hands, head and feet and did all the woodwork in my home shop and used notebook covers to make the joints. But, but this pixel for pixel is this character. Amazing. Yes. And, and how's it grown? How do, how do you the, reproduce the, the... The rapid prototyper grows it like a thousandth of an inch at a time. Just, it's like a, a copy machine uh, without the ink, uh, without the paper. Just the ink stays. So this thing, slice by slice, grows, 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 grows. And you actually get that head just like that, the hands just like that. Pixel for pixel, they're the same thing. This is called the roller vader, and the roller vader is just made out of wood and metal, and when you crank it, these steel ball bearings climb up the hill and go down. And then they recycle. This was made out of wood that was discarded at Hallmark, um, parts of the wood. Uh, they used the wood to make puzzles and things, and when they're done with it, they uh, throw it away. So I, I got to go on to it. And by the way, this is my grandmother's sewing machine, and I turned it into a, a scroll saw. Oh my god. <laughs> I have one of these at home. Oh, well, my, my, you guys might make a scroll saw. Yeah, really? Here on the wall are the plans. This this really is the plans, how to make that. I designed everything in the show on the computer. What made you want to do this, this piece? I uh, wanted to do something with marbles um, that would recycle. And uh, truthfully, I did see a stair step, stepping movement similar to that. And even the Egyptians used to move water or something like that. But I, I turned it into a recycling thing with lots more, with gears and parts. But it was a brain buster. I had, it took three tries before I got it to work. Oh, only three tries. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thanks to the use of a computer, I can design things like the holy cow. This, this is holy cow. And um, I, can, I can print out the, um, the different pieces, uh, print it on paper, glue it to the wood, cut it out, and drill it, and, and make things like this. It has four large gears and uh, cogs, and it's made out of uh, 
Baltic birch and maple. And it has cow spots. Are these, these look like a little angel. They are yeah. angel spots. Ah, you get an A on the, the test, little, Mike. And the little holy cow. Yeah. Part of it. And, and these are subtle things that you don't even tell people. Well, you try to push a design a little bit further than just so what. So I tried to, um, I tried to give it more character. And, and it, it works very well. It works so easy that you can just barely push it with your... Amazing. Yeah. Actually, for it to do that is really good because that shows there's hardly any friction in it. So yeah, it's holy cow. This and once, is, one, once you design this one time, you can actually take the computer and make all these views because it's yes. in there three-dimensional. That's how I did that. And you, it's called rendering. And you can make it transparent so you can see through parts. You can, um, you can show what's called isocurves so you can see all the lines on it. But the computer made it so that I could make these things. And I could even judge them on the computer as too big, too small. So, and I made a couple of prototypes, everything I prototyped. This is Wimsby Picky Tweak, and uh, <laughs> he's, <Wimsy. laughs> he, he's the little mouse that, he's a toy maker, and it, when the toy maker's gone, he looks at his journal and um, creates parts and pieces from the, the toy maker's uh, um, store of cogs and gears and things like that. He makes these things. So that's, that's the story behind that. Uh, this is a zoetrope and a praxinoscope. They're old-fashioned toys. I stack two together. Usually it's one or the other. And the images are the Great Perfecto and Wimsby Picky Tweet. The Great Perfecto is an acrobat, and he spins inside, and Wimsby runs. So if you can look down at about that angle on the mirrors, you see that he's animated and running. And if you look straight through those holes about the distance you're at, now you've got to kind of study it, but he looks like he's spinning. Oh, yeah. And this, this is the plans for that. Now, I made the plans, I made the characters. I had the Hallmark Creative Workshop actually build this piece for me. And just to show you, awesome. thank you, Mike. Just to show you, this is parts and pieces. We dummy everything up once before we make it. This is as fancy as I ever got with my drawings. They're on napkins. And, um, this is the thing that I found at an antique store that got me started. I loved the shape of the wheel, and so I made my wheels for the things that I um, was designing, just like those wheels. But I did, you, did you make that wheel on the computer? Yes, this and then wheel. Grew it. Uh, even even these handlebars with the uh, horn that that's computer generated. I can, I can do things with a computer that I can't do by hand. I can do it more accurate. Um, and I get to work with engineers. I, I worked with um, a man named Ron Carlson who helped me with the gears. I know that if you rub two quarters and a dime together, they'll turn like this. I, I know a little bit about um, engineering, just a teeny bit. But Ron helped take the, you might see the quarter and the dimes and actually turn them into gears that would really make these things work. Wow. <laughs> so these are um, drawings that the computer generated, and then you take these and you, you cut the paper out, glue it to a piece of wood, and then cut it out, and you uh, create, this is actually a horse's leg pattern, but that's how I would make these, these things. I would just have the um, glue the uh, generated piece, the printout, onto something and actually just make it. Like right here, you still have the yeah. thing glued on it. Right. And See, this is the rudder of an airplane. So that's, see, it's wood. But it's wise to dummy up everything just once when you make it before you go for the flying. So this is parts and pieces. My wife helped me uh, sew things that Linda would make patterns for the clothing. Oh, isn't that something? And over here is, uh, <coughs> this is a, a marionette. This is uh, Hornsby Hoodwinker. He's a flim flam man. And uh, he, he can talk, and he, he's fully movable. But uh, that shows you uh, what the wooden body with the uh, plastic joints looks like when you finish it. But see, he's, he's totally animatable. And uh, that is called a controller. This is the stand. I, I used a artist mannequin 
its hand to display it. But, um, and that's my own design on it, controller. It looks like part violin, part bird's wing. Right. Amazing. Thank you. This is Waldo Wingdinger. This is what he looked like on the computer. This is my own uh, body, which you saw earlier, um, my marionette body. And then this is Waldo Wingdinger here. And he can, he can flap his wings. He can uh, kick his legs. And this is made out of felt that was stretched over a wooden form, felt with glue in it, and you let it dry. And then underneath, I uh, made wooden structures with metal. So, so he can he can look at you, look around, and he can kick his feet around. How did you color? Did, did you, what kind of paint did you use? I actually used it's called uh, Design Master spray paint, and just sprayed it right. The felt was actually gray, but I, I sprayed it to give it color. And then all the clothing really is that color. But the head, um, I used wood tone spray paint and lacquer, and you just get at a distance. And and it freckles it, and then when you hit it with the lacquer, the lacquer melts the freckles, and it gives a really interesting skin tone, <laughs> which is something I've never done before. Perfection. So you just Perfection. accidentally discovered that when yeah, you Yeah, I've never done that before, and I, I knew I wanted to give it character, and I, at first I thought I wanted it to look like carousel horses or whatever the way the paint is. But, but it, and even looking at the, the little hand here, it's got the same texture as my freckly hand. Well, people really do. We're not just plastic. We have character in, in different colors, so that made it look a little more real. And so this is, that's his helmet. That's what that represents and how I designed it. Um, the computer can take one little shape and array it. That's one shape and it arrayed it like 50 times to make that uh, ridge over his helmet. Now this is a 24-inch marionette that his head is computer generated, his eyes turn. His eyebrows, his eyelids move, his eyebrows will move. His eyes turn to look at to look at you. He's looking at Mike. He's looking at Vicky and he's looking at me. And he can he can uh, talk. He can move his hands. And every little sprig of hair um, was made in a group that you uh, wrap with your fingers, you put glue on the end. And then you drill holes. There's around a hundred holes in his head that you put more glue on it and push that little grouping of hair in, and that's how I, I got that. All these are toys I wish I, I could have had when I was a kid, but now that I'm an adult, I have an uh, interest of a the same interest I used to have when I was little, but I have the abilities of an adult, an adult to make things. So you can see the, the freckles on his hand. What about the eyeglasses? Those are one piece of wire just bent and put over his head and it wraps around his ears. When I was a little boy, I used to have to wear those glasses that hugged your ears. Well, his glasses hug his ears. That's why they won't fall off. How did you, I mean, did you just kind of bend that by hand or did you make yourself a little... Took a wooden dowel, wrapped it around it, and uh, another wooden dowel bent the nose piece and wrapped it around another dowel and then bent it and a lot of trial and error and a lot of try it again, try it again. Because everything here didn't really happen the first time, just to let you know. It, there was a lot of experimentation and I had six months to experiment and it, all this was done mostly in that six month period. Are you going to talk about the head neck, about how all these little things make oh. the eyes move? Is that next? Yeah, this is how the mechanical, this is how I designed the mechanical head on, it's called Rhino, and I made, um, pieces inside that will actually allow the eyeballs and eyelids, eyebrows and mouth to move. I've wanted to do that ever since I was a kid, ever since I saw Disneyland, and this is my version of a, um, this is what I can afford as far as animatronics. What's interesting is you can even see how the teeth are placed in the mouth, and on the computer you can get inside the mouth, look at the teeth and see that the teeth aren't hitting each other. And if they are, you can move the teeth back or lower them. So I, I, I knew when I made him that his mouth was going to work and that the teeth wouldn't hit. This um, is my father's favorite thing that I it's worked on. It's my favorite thing, too. He's Scrooge. And see how he even has a sly look in his, yeah. and his eyelids go down as he... Uh, he does. And see, he can, he can be sleepy or kind of... Mm, 
sinister. And, but he's not always mean. He can be happy. But he gets, he goes right back to me. <laughs> and I strung him so that he's bent over and more uh, old and crotchety. But his legs will, he can, he can walk. And, uh, and this was actually a shirt from a thrift store to make that. And I, I want to point out my wife, who sewed everything, she even lined the interiors. I, I tell you, the, combina the combination of the two of you, what I can't... Husband and wife's great so thing. Awesome. Awesome. It, yeah, yes. it is awesome. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It really is. And, and this is from a wool feather duster at hy <laughs> oh my God. And this is Tibetan's ram wool, ram wool from uh, Tandy Leather. This window represents patterns my wife worked on in grouping of uh, fabrics and um, fur for different characters. The toy maker, the uh, half man, half goat, which you'll see in a moment, and the pirate, which this is a pirate. My wife didn't sew it on an antique sewing machine. We just have that here just for ambiance. But this is Argus Scuttle Buttons, and he's, he's a pirate. And I gave him blue eyes so he'd be friendly looking. And uh, so he wouldn't really hurt anybody, but he... he uh, he just has a, just character. He can talk and do everything. And I, I just had a need to make a pirate. Just so if this were a story, every, actually, every little boy loves pirates. Pirates. Our grandsons. Actually, I'm glad you said that because all these are my little boy dreams of characters. So, and I actually got to make every character I wanted to. And this, this actually shows what the interior of his body looks like. He's got a wooden backbone. These pieces are made from uh, foam curlers that uh, ladies use for their hair. And, um, and this is actually foam that I got from a store that people use for camping. It's about an inch thick. And I cemented it together and uh, made these shapes. But this is my own design of a, what's called a controller. It looks like it's part violin and part wing. But um, thanks to Hallmark, I got to learn these skills making Christmas ornaments, and I tried to take it a step further, so I, I had to make something bigger than three inches. I wanted to make something 24 inches, inches tall, and that's why that happened. Hey, I'll, I'll show you some of my very favorite things. Um, this is Otis J. Snozzle Blast's one-man band, and when, when it's cranked, it plays music. Rich Gilson in the creative workshop did all the woodworking and all the metalworking. I designed it all and created the character. My wife made the clothing. But um, if you, thank you. If you kind of look at it like a movie, I got to be Steven Spielberg and pick the best actors and actresses. So I had help to make these things, but I got to dream it up. This is the piece that you showed us over there, the sample table. It's the handlebars. And, uh, Oh. I've got to say something about this little sign that you've got on the Well, this sign, if you look at it, which was um, etched, uh, cut with a, a laser, and the lettering was done with the laser, it says, Otis J. Snozzle Blast, and it's one-man band, and it mentions Tracy I. Snoggle, who performed the music, uh, Gilson Carriage Works, Rich Gilson, who made the woodworking metal, Ron Carlson, who helped me with the gears. He's a, a great engineer. And uh, Gentry Specialized Instruments. Rodney Gentry is the man who used the rapid prototype machine to make uh, the computer generated parts. And if you look in the back, you can actually see where the, the speaker is. And, and is that music electronic? It's, it actually sounds like it's being pumped and by air. People, people think it's actually pumped, but um, uh, actually there's a pedal on an axle, and the pedal hits a switch. Every time the pedal goes around, it tells that switch. One more second, one more second. So when you crank it, it puts it all together and makes you think that it's... So the illusion is, yeah, it's, it's a pipe organ. But so, oh, you know... And even the notes are etched uh, with the computer, and Brenda Clinky, another engineer, helped um, get that done. So, yeah, I just thought, what's the coolest thing I can give Barbara Marshall? What's the best thing I can make? And so this is, this is one of them, but I, I got a couple more. This is, this is Major Sputz and Pops' um, flying machine. And so he, he pedals it, his head moves, his, uh, 
his legs are moving and the, the chains look like they're, um, they are actually turning things, but they, I think they're humorous the way they flabba, flabba, flabba. And I tried to make the design of it look like dust is kicking up and moving forward. <laughs> But he even has a pillow in case he crashes. I love, I love the pillow. <laughs> oh, I do. Oh, my God. But once again, the woodwork and metalwork was done by Rich Gilson. But as you look on the walls, this is actually, this is the plans. This is what I made on the computer. And this is what I made on the computer for the character. So uh, the computer was just invaluable. I, I, could, I never hardly drew anything. I just made it on the computer. And I just had this drive. Um, I'd get up at 5 o'clock and work on it till 10 o'clock at night every day. And I just had to get something done. And given this, this much time to do that much, you just got to put a lot of focus. But here I'd like to show you one more, uh, actually two more. Um, I'll show you Cranky McClinking Cog's Kaleidoscope. And um, originally, he cranked but we need a little repair because there's moisture in this room, uh, a piece of wood swollen and cracked. But just like those um, clowns on popcorn machines, he would crank, but um, this turns and, and has an image that you can see in 360 degrees. And this is a kaleidoscope. If you look inside, you can, you can actually look in and um, So that's Cranky McClinkin Cog's Colossal Kaleidoscope, and it kind of bounces all around your mouth before you get it out, but I, I tried to have words that sounded like clickety-clackety, you know, snozzle blast or whatever. Well, I love the names. <laughs> the, name, the names just make it, too. Yeah, it's a great name. I tried to maximize on everything that I could. Um, the, the, the name, the character, the wood, the, the look of it. It, it really came out great. I'm, I'm really thankful I got to work on these. And here's uh, one more I'd like to show you. This is Benson Chatswell, and he was named after Jack Benson, who could chat well. He could talk well. So I just thought, oh, Benson Chatswell. But, so I'm left-handed. Well, hello, Mike and Vicki. Welcome to the toy shop. Oh, the toys are so glad to have you here. Well, we're glad to be here. Well, it's <laughs> like I kind of got tongue-tied. You know, I don't talk a whole lot. Hey, Vicki, you want to see how it works? Here, what would you like to say to Mike? You put your hand on that and put one finger out and put your finger in there. And that's how you talk. And, and you can tilt it. And be, and, um, you tilt or tilt like that. It's looking at Mike. So now you can sit. Oh, <laughs> check. Oh my gosh, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can just get wild with it. You can push you it would, in, pull it out. I know you would just love it. These glasses, too. Look at the glasses. I mean, just everything. That's Look just a this. piece of wire to do the glasses. The head is actually flocked, and it was computer generated, but it's flocked to look like cloth. That is amazing. And, and the buttons are nail heads. You want to try it, Mike? Yeah. I actually snuck in here one morning, and Ken and I. <laughs> Went back and forth and had conversations. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's amazing. Didn't we can. Do you remember that? Where are you, Ken? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't turn quite that far. <laughs> here, I'll get over here some. Oh, there you yeah. are. See, every, oh, there you are. Every day I would go in and he'd give me five. You know, he'd raise his oh. arm up and I'd go, hey, things are going well. Oh. Hey, there's I'd like to chew this gum. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to show you. Uh, Two or three more things. Okay. Over here is a workbench that Rich Gelson built. And on the workbench is the uh, Toymaker's Journal. And this has my plans in it. And it actually has pictures of my home workshop in it. At the very back. And it's, it's actually made out of leather. And it says McClinton Cog's Toy Shop. That's awesome. And Rich Gelson built this workbench, put his tools on it, and these are examples just of things I I made just to see if I could make it, just to see if I could do woodworking again. These are when I first started out, and uh, this is called a Geneva gear. Six turns makes that move uh, around once, and it just lifts the arms up and down. So 
So these were just practice things. Just practice. Kind of get warmed up. Like this is how I practiced on holy cow. Just to see if I could do it or what wasn't right, if the legs would hit wrong. So. And this is an example of not everything works good. This really didn't work good, which I went in total panic. But because of that, I forced myself to figure it out and, and make something that really did work good. Hey, there's a couple on the outside I'd like to show you. Okay. So this is um, another one of the 24-inch marionettes. And this is Chester Bumpkins. His mouth is wide open right now because I just have it um, posed with a wire up there. But he, he does everything like the other guys do, and he, he can move his eyebrows. To let you know the way the eyebrows move, there's a, a string on the outside of his head that when he tilts his head, this loop of string actually pulls out in it. And it says, eyebrow go up, you might say, or this one pulls out. So when, you, when, when his head's tilted, it'll raise his eyebrow up like that. And actually, when his head's tilted, uh, his eyelids move also. But, so he's a, see, his talker's kind of set on open because of the wire. But, and he's real smart. Like, if you ask him what's 2 plus 2, it's a... Uh, Why half man, half goat? I just wanted to make something that had arms and legs and could talk to you and was a little, little different. So, oh, that's great. see, he's all, he's animatable. So, and it, that's terrific. That's, that's, yeah. The color, and that's even on the costumes and everything. The colors. Are easy for this. Thank you, Mike. Perfect. You know, you know, pretty neat. Now I'll just show you a couple windows real quick. Actually, a computer-generated piece, that mouse is that uh, image there, dot for dot, except for the wooden um, stick he's holding. Originally, he was going to be a musical toy that when you crank it, he was going to play music. But he's whimsy picky tweak because in committee at Hallmark, they're picky and tweaky. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I know there's a lot of glare on this window, but this actually shows what the character looked like before he had his costume on him. So I actually called him Mr. Ugly for the longest time, because he was, but um, he's twigging his simple bones now instead of Mr. Ugly. <laughs> but that shows his head there, um, hollow, and all the pieces just drop together. It just works out real good. Wow. And this is an example of uh, the two body styles, the totally computer-generated piece that has 16 parts and the partially computer-generated piece that has, uh, it has uh, a wooden body with computer-generated parts. Just to let you know, this is what the characters look through the windows every day. They're right outside of the words Hallmark Cards. We're on the ninth floor. And this represents the tools I used more than any other tools, the, the wire, the fishing string. But I use that little hammer and that little drill and the little pliers all the time. Just uh, and I, actually, I rarely measured anything because I, I, it was pre-measured on the computer. And when I printed out, it was just smack dab right on. Wow. And this last window represents my workshop. That really was where I spent six months. And that shows you, holy cow, that's, a, that's one of the pre-duds that I worked on, or the roughs. But it shows the marionettes in progress. My favorite place on earth is my home workshop. I'm Benson Chatswell, and I'm here talking to the real Jack Benson, who chats well. Jack, how's it going? Just fine. Now, Jack, aren't you sorry for all the things you said to Ken over the years that were... I mean, you weren't bad. You were, uh... Well, what were you, Jack? Were you, uh... I don't, uh... Uh, bad. <laughs> it, it was bad. <laughs> yes, I gave Ken possibly a little more grief than I should have, but he's a big guy. <laughs> well, Jack, just to let you know, because you are such a memorable person in Ken's life, he decided to make a toy based on uh, you. And that's why I'm Benson Chatswell. And I'm very proud. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Go. Hey, Captain, this is Ken's show. This is going to be fun. Oh, look at this. 11-inch marionette. Looks just like real wood. wood. And, and all the joints and everything. Mr. McClinkin Cog's Toy Shop. And here we have Chester Bumpkins. And we have this machine in front of it, which is called the Roller 
Bader Marble Lifter. Too much. And then over Nancy here. Nancy would love this one. Look at this. Holy cow. The spots are angels. I want one. Yeah. And Wimsby. Looks like a mouse. Zoetrope. And a Praxinoscope. Oh, cool. Huh. Look at the, how the mirror is. It looks like he's running. And a motion to it. And the blueprints over here. I can't get over this. How real. The 3D different views. The great perfecto. And what do we have over here? Looks like a display of what it took to put these things together. Otis J. Snozzleblast. One man band. And his notes. I Drawings. Like Back of an envelope or back of a napkin. It's an napkin, yeah. Huh. Oh boy, Hornsby Hoodwinker, the flim flam man. He looks like a flim flam man. Yeah, snake oil sales. Hey, what do you want to buy from him? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to buy anything. I think I'd like to be a Waldo Wingdinger and just take off and fly. He Doesn't he look like something around the 1900s? Yeah, he looks like he's having a great time, too. He's got this big smile. Yeah, he's probably the happiest person in here. How does that work? You just kind of pull here. Wow, look at that. And he moves and does all kinds of things. Look. Huh. And it's also autographed by Ken Crow. Did you see that? I hope they all are. Who's this? Ruskin Tinker Tapper. Oh, we have an Uncle Russ. <laughs> there could be a connection there. Ooh, Ebenezer Scrooge. How does that work? these things. Look at the eyes move and the expression on his face. Oh, lifting up. Oh, his eyes are closed and his mouth is open. He's look tired. And he's looking there. Oh, too exciting. It's heavier than you think for when you pick it up. But you have to have strong hands to use them. Oh, I like this one. Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh -huh. I think that must be maybe before the uh, last of the... Uh, Spirits visit him and his. Uh, he looks like he could be very <laughs> sly. <laughs> Don't know if I trust him. And what do we have over here? Uh, this is the other half of the operation. This is Linda's work uh, with uh, sewing the different patterns and all the different fabrics. But that was a lot of hard work. But you Ooh, can tell pirate. it looks great. Argus scuttle buttons. <laughs> And he looks Ooh. like he fit right in with the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, he sees who we're here. He wants to talk. I wonder what he wants to tell us. You'll really like this show. It's great. And all my buddies are here. And the creator sat on the other side of the camera. 24-inch <laughs> marionette. And what do we have over oh, here? Jay Snondelblast. One man band. <laughs> Head. He's got a goose in his head. Don't you love the sound? Yeah. The wheels, the same pattern on the wheels. Ken was telling us about. Yeah, it looks like that would be fun too. So over here, this is the video that Ken was telling us about. Special recognition for their talent and support. I know that there were a lot of people from home that helped out hey, with this. Sam, hey, this was the bench that Ken was telling me about with all the different tools. I think I recognize some of them from the farm and other places. 30 second warning. Okay, Fabulous look over here. Flying machine. Yes. Hey, they did actually fly back then. Yeah. And all these uh, blueprints on the wall. Straight out of H.G. Wells. Otis J. Snows Blast, Bam Bam Bam, all these. Wow, I think we pretty much had a chance to see it. Ken, Almost. this is terrific. Oh, the best for last. We have Vincent Chatswell. And he looks like he's in rare form, the animator. And then also over here we have Cranky McClinkincog. Of course, this is named after him as Colossal Kaleidoscope. Oh my, it even works. Look at this. Too exciting. And finally, the poster. Here telling us about the event, and it was open here in December and January of 2007. Kathy, come on over and take a look at this. 
Barbara Marshall Award, 2006, Toy Maker Kim. Two amazing. And we're going back over here to McLean Cogman. We're in the center of the whole display, and this is just two amazing. Ken, we really appreciate the chance to be here and see your oh, show and all the hard work that you've done over the last almost year well, getting ready for this. Stan and Kathy, I'm so glad you got to come to McClinkin Cog's Toy Shop and visit all the toys. It's been one of the greatest experiences of my life, and I, Ken and everybody wants to thank you. This is just one of the greatest moments. So from all the toys to all of you, thanks Stan and Kathy for making us come to life. Thank You're you. welcome, and thank you for speaking to us. Oh, and by the way, there's Chester Bumpkins. We need to go outside and see him. Chester oh, yeah. He's right around the corner, and we're just we're almost there. And here he is, Chester Bumpkins. I had a chance to see him earlier, and he's ready and waiting for us, and he's saying hi. And well, I think that's pretty much it. We were here at Hallmark Cards on the 11th of January, 2007. Yeah, weather's not so bad. We're going to be heading over to Barber in Mexico to be with the crows. And for the uh, uh, special moment in our life. So thank you, Ken, for everything. <laughs>